This top 10 list actually is from ChatGPT, the be all, end all, know it all. But I gotta say, these questions are actually really good. So what are the top 10 questions you should be asking yourself before buying in the Denver market? Number one, what is the average price of homes in the Denver market? Which actually, all right, we're starting off on a bad note here because the average price doesn't mean as much as the median price does. But just to give you an example, the median price is around the whole Denver metro area. Not just Denver, because there's a good chance you won't actually be buying in Denver. You might be looking in Aurora or Littleton, but to give you an idea, Denver median home price today, as of January 2024, sitting right at about 535,000. Now, if you were to look in the Littleton market, you'd be looking at about 635. And if you're looking in Aurora, well, you're at about 465. Number two, is Denver currently a buyer's market or a seller's market? This is a fantastic question. And you know, we're actually in a really goofy market. To make it a short answer, the answer is it's kind of both right now. This is the most balanced, well, I've ever seen it since I've been in the industry in 2010. But just to give you an idea, we've got about one and a half to two months of inventory currently on the market in the Denver metro area. A balanced market is about six months. So technically it's a seller's market. However, we're, we're pretty balanced overall. My name is Alex Saldana. I'm a local Denver real estate agent. And I have been since 2010 and I love answering questions you home buyers, homeowners have on this channel. And if there is a topic that I haven't discussed here, I'm not gonna, just go ahead, drop a comment below and I will make a video about it for you personally. Number three, what neighborhoods are actually the best for first time home buyers? Again, this is a very loaded question with so many variables because to be frank with you, you know, 10 years ago, I would have said, hey, first time home buyers in their 20s, you know, we're going to be looking closer to downtown. We're going to be looking at places like Cap Hill, Low High, the Highlands, things like that. However, today in 2024, first time home buyers, I have lots of first time home buyers well into their 30s with one and maybe two kids. So schools are a much bigger consideration. So we might actually be looking in places like Littleton. Places like Aurora, where you can get way more bang for your buck, where you can get four bedrooms, two baths for, you know, four or 500,000. So it really depends on what you're looking for. Nightlife, yeah, we're gonna stay closer towards downtown. Um, if you want a single family home, but you still wanna be close to Denver, you know, or downtown, I should say, we're gonna look towards East Colfax, perhaps. But this answer varies widely. Number four, this is a good one. How competitive is the market for first time home buyers? And you know, even though we're kind of balanced, right? We have one and a half to two months of inventory, as many buyers as there are sellers essentially, it's still really competitive on the first time home buyers market, especially for single family homes. I'll give you a good example. You know, it's January right now, had a house on the market for about the last six weeks over the holidays, slow traffic in general. All of a sudden January kicks in, get six showings over one week, we end up in a multiple offer situation. So there's not a ton of inventory, sub 500,000 or so, which I would consider kind of first time home buyer uh, territory. And so because of that, if it looks good, if it's in a good location, if it's priced right, competition is high, don't sleep on it. Number five, what are the different property tax rates in the different Denver neighborhoods? Well. I got this one for you. It's real easy. The entire city of Denver and actually the state of Colorado is the third lowest in property taxes. So kind of a quick rule of thumb here is about half of a percent of your property's value is still a little bit more than you're going to pay yearly in property taxes. So for example, if your home is valued at say 500,000, expect to pay roughly a little bit under $2,500 a year in property taxes. We're the third lowest state in the country for property taxes. Fun little fact. Number six, are there any first time home buyer assistant programs in Denver? And you know, I'm on the real estate side. Most people in Colorado are either licensed for real estate or to be a lender. So this is really a perfect question for your lender, but almost always the answer is yes. There's Chaffa programs. Uh, there's of course FHA loans, conventional loans. There are often grants as well for first time home buyers. 
depending on your income levels. But again, this is the question to ask your lender. Short answer, yep, there usually are. And if you're wondering where I'm walking, I'm actually right outside of Wash Park, which is the number one rated neighborhood in Denver in 2024. And you can see behind me here, we got the mountains in the background. We got some snow coming. We're actually heading skiing this weekend. Gonna go enjoy four to six inches Saturday, Sunday, and Monday on this awesome long weekend. Number seven, what does the home buying process actually look like in Denver? And even though that's kind of a video all unto itself, it's actually really simple and straightforward. You know, first you're gonna get pre-approved, right? Without knowing what your income and your buying power is, it makes zero sense to go look at homes, right? Then from there, you're gonna get your wants and needs, talk to your real estate agent and start the home buying process. Then from there, you're putting in your offer, you're negotiating on inspection items, you're getting the appraisal done, you're getting the clear to close from the lender, you're closing, the process takes about 30 days on average. Number eight, what should you know about our climate and environment that could affect your home in Denver? Well, that's a really interesting topic. You know, I come from the Midwest, originally Chicago. I've been out here 20 years or so, and albeit a little bit of a gray day, I love it. It's January right now. It's cool, it's maybe in the 30s, but it's honestly sweater weather. Uh, the dry temperatures here change things drastically for people. Some people don't respond well. Some people need to carry chapstick all the time on them. You know, as far as a home is concerned, uh, the upside is that honestly, we don't have things like mold. And I shouldn't say that as a blanket statement. Some homes have mold in them. Uh, but in the 13, 14 years I've been doing this, haven't had any mold issues and I flip houses as well. So I see the worst of the worst. Mold, not so much an issue. Termites, also not an issue. Uh, we do get a ton of hail. Roofs, we're the roof replacement capital of the world and hail storms can get really, really nasty. So average life of a roof is probably seven to 10 years, honestly. Uh, we get a lot of hail storms. It does get hot in the summer, 90s easily, but you don't always need AC. Uh, depending on how big your home is, a swamp cooler might be fine. We have a swamp cooler in our house. We do not have central air. It keeps our house at about 70 to 72 degrees at a constant basis. As far as the winters go, you know, a cold spell for us is honestly in the 20s. So standard furnaces, nothing too crazy, nothing too different than most homes in the US. With our higher elevation though, you will notice that paint jobs may have to be done more regularly. Staining on the exterior house may have to be done more regularly. Fences dry out a bit quicker. So there can be some more maintenance because of our high desert climate. But on the same note, we don't have a lot of moisture issues that a lot of other states in the country have. Number nine, what are the best schools and school districts in Denver for families? Now, this one is gonna range all over the place again, right? It depends on what you're looking for. I will say from personal experience is that elementary schools are rated really well across the board in almost all of Denver, Denver Metro, okay? Middle schools, we kind of struggle. Uh, they're not rated high. An average rating for most Denver middle schools is four to six on greatschools.org. I'll also have a link in the description below that you can kind of check that out. Um, and then high schools, again, they go up as far as their ratings go. The most popular school districts around are gonna be Cherry Creek School District and the Littleton School Districts. And that's for a lot of reasons because they're rated really high. And number 10, how does commute time and public transportation affect your Denver home's value? This is kind of an easy one. <laughs> it honestly doesn't. Our public transportation here sucks. Uh, that's the short answer. You know, we have our light rail and yeah, that can be utilized to get to the airport or to go downtown if you live in the suburbs, but we don't have many offshoots here. So it's kind of just a north to south route. The bus routes here are not very effective. It might take you 45 minutes to get across town when it would be a 10 to 15 minute drive. We are not built for public transportation. We're not this huge city. We sprawl out. We've got lots of land around us. And because of that, really, it has no bearing on home values. And I do love answering your questions so much so that if you have anything specific, give me a call, shoot me a text message, nights, days, weekends, I got you covered. And if you are looking around the Denver area, you're really gonna wanna watch this playlist on the top 10 neighborhoods in Denver for 2024.